What's the story behind the name Cobra and the Lotus? Oh, I grew up with uh, India, actually, as a big part of my life. And uh, I've been there, I think, 13 times uh, to one region specifically, but it very much influenced a lot of things. And one of the things was uh, the cobra and how it was symbolized. It was this protector for humanity, and I loved that. So mm. I really resonated with that symbolism. And then the lotus, it being just so beautiful and coming out of this muck and mud that you would never expect it to, I thought was just... Um, almost a human thing so I put them together and it just uh, brought together this duality as well I think that it, that name sounds like it's feminine and masculine mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which is important to me because our, our universe is du has duality all over it so it's a very universal name to me <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's a really nice it's, it's a really nice attractive name I think it's a uh... It, it sounds like something you want to bite into. <laughs> well, thank you. You never know. Band names are so strange. When you first start with them, too, it's like, oh, man, does this sound really weird? And then when I think about everyone's names out there, it's like the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, Guns N' Roses. You know, it's like, no, like you just make your name as you go along. <laughs> You started as a classical musician very young, right? So you're, um, what kind of a family did you come from that they, you know, put their daughter, you know, or, or encouraged this direction at an early age like that? Well, uh, my dad, he always did uh, piano while I was growing up and he is um, beautiful on the piano. And so we always had that and he did want us all to do piano. I have two other siblings that are younger than me and we all had to commit to six years, I think he wanted from us. Um, but when I did go into uh, vocals, uh, that was just me. I was little, I was six and I said, I really want lessons. And then I, I really just, yeah, I just was not feeling the classical vein operatically, specifically operatically um, anymore. So. I stopped, and when I was 15, uh, this is only a couple of years later, that I saw Judas Priest. And then it was like, oh, wow, you know, uh, that really fits, I feel like, in a big way who I am. I had even heard Iron Maiden, and that is not the thing that sucked me in. It was Judas Priest, specifically. Um, and it was seeing them live that really turned the table for me. And my dad took me to that concert. Was it a reaction to sort of like us? Because I can imagine you being this, you know, pretty little <laughs> piano playing girl and then being like, nah, I want to sort of break out of this. And I think that there was this transitional period that you see in many teenagers where all of a sudden they're trying to apply their eyeliner and they've never done it before. And the jelly bracelets bust out and, um, you know, the converse and everything. And you're trying to like patch your clothes that started to happen with me and my sister. As soon as we got hormones, it was just like, we totally went alternative. And my parents at first were kind of like, uh Oh, what's happening? Uh, I pierced my nose by myself. Actually me and my sister did it together. She took hers out cause she didn't want to get in trouble. And I left mine in and to school with like my cheap earring in my nose and it looked horrible and and then they they like turned after that moment forward and started letting us really like express ourselves which was amazing so my mom the deal was if I didn't wear such heavy dark eyeliner and makeup on my eyes and she could take me to MAC cosmetics and they could show me how to apply my makeup and uh buy me five colorful pieces of clothes. Okay. Then she said, I'll take you and I'll sign my permission for you to get your nose properly pierced. And that was the deal that we broke. And uh, they just really nurtured us from there on in and we became closer to them again because we didn't have to try so hard to rebel, I guess, whatever we were thinking we were doing. <laughs> So you said that you saw Judas Priest and that was like a big moment for you, but um, then pretty soon after, after you started, you worked with them and you toured with, with them, I think. You've come in touch with some very huge metal heroes quite early on. How much did you learn from being around these guys? And what was the person that sort of 
that you got closest to and that taught you the most? To be around these guys, um, I would say it's it was mostly inspirational. Um, some people that we talked to actually the most were uh, Def Leppard when you were on that band. And those guys were really, really cool because they shared experiences where people tore them down and they excelled past that and just push through this terrible stuff. Like they are telling us about shows where they were opening for Iron Maiden and getting bottles of piss thrown at them. And uh, they were just saying, you know, we don't know how the world has changed in terms of this industry for you guys coming up here, but you can't stop, you know, if you love this, like, and they were really, really positive, just reinforcing, that, you know, even if you get a, a pushback and hate or anything, you gotta keep going. And uh, so those guys stand out actually the most out of anything. And I can imagine that even, you know, like especially being young and looking at these big names, like these big guys, and then you sort of would see that as well. Like you, maybe they wouldn't even have to necessarily teach you about it, but you just kind of see that, um, yeah, what it basically takes. And I think a lot of it is just hanging in there. Like it's just kind of keep going. I do think that is actually a big thing, especially a metal, yeah, because it's organic. Yeah. You see, you're growing your fans organically and people that support you and believe in the music and love the music, and that can only be done with time. Essentially, time is your friend, so it's this game of, like, hanging in there, and I, I feel so sad when I see people, um, they gave up, because I know, we all know, <laughs> we all know, and it's just, it's just like endurance that yeah. really matters yeah, yeah. just a, a question on the side as a from one girl to another but did you find it scary in the beginning to to put yourself out there in that way like I mean like there's a certain vulnerability to it like okay I'm gonna be this person and this is what I do and you, you know everybody can watch it I don't know, yeah. like, I, 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 there's a certain element of, 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 there's a scariness about it as well, which I'm sure once you get on the other side of that, then, then it's great, but you kind of have to push through that a little bit in the beginning, I think. I think I still deal with that fear to a degree, um, because I, uh, I, I have to say I don't find it easy all, all the time to be female, uh, to be a woman that does this it's 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 not the same like in many ways um as a guy and uh even so far as like how people speak about women in bands on youtube compared to men in bands they tear women apart way harsher uh, than they will tear a man apart it's it's very interesting and um the other thing is uh that uh, we we have these bodies, like I think our bodies are so beautiful, women are just beautiful, and the curves are beautiful, and the softness, and um, it's not something we should hide, but how do you share that? I went through so many different phases of dressing to figure out how the hell to do it. I even went through an androgynous phase where everyone can find me in leather pants and like a vest that basically like covers my chest and stuff, and for three or four years I was covering my curves and uh, it wasn't until uh, the last three years, like 2015, really, really, I guess because I was working on myself too, you know, so something more shifted and I was like, you know, like, I really like being a woman. I want to, I want to embrace what I am. I don't want to like push it in people's faces more than it's already obvious, but I, I want to have my curves and, uh, so that's been uh, something new to figure out, and um, someone will always have an opinion, but in general, I feel much happier since I did that. Um, yeah, and, uh, that's, what I, that's what I mean. I'm sure that once you get through it, and you get on the other side, and you sort of own it, and it's all good, and you don't, you know, you sort of know, like, people are going to say what they're going to say, and they're going to be these stupid comments, or they're going to they're be, you know, guys that seem to think that you know, you're only there because you have boobs and an ass and, and yeah. you know, like, and I think especially in metal, I don't know why, but I think like, because it's such a guy's, a guy's uh, world. It's still very male dominated. And even in the sense that um, 
you know, when I go on tour, for instance, I'll be the only female out of 15 guys on a bus, you know, it's even dominated just in that sense. So I, I've had something new happening over the last uh, year or so, um, that didn't used to happen to me anymore. And that's, um, that's being like physically touched in ways that I don't appreciate. And that has come with more like growth. And that's weird uh, for me. I have not figured out quite how to handle it after the last year of touring. Um, there were just some instances like getting my ass smacked when I walked off the bus and I got manhandled off the stage almost twice at a show. Yeah, like I freaked out the last time when I was trying to get grabbed off that stage and after I've been grabbed a few times already, I was just like, I, I flipped out on the mic and that's not very like me at all, but I didn't even know what to do. I was just like, holy shit, like I could have just face planted him and slammed into the ground and I'm pretty physically strong and that's all that stopped a bad thing from happening right now. So, yeah, yeah. that's, that's, that's. That's fucked up. That's scary. Yeah, it is. So, and but do you feel like like now you you you're able to find like you're you're a little bit more in tune with those boundaries, or you're still like figuring it out? I think that I'm still learning, but I am much more in tune with um, stuff. I just know that um, there are ways that I can diplomatically even express vocally if someone is going in for something that makes me uncomfortable. Just like. Um, you know, please, can you keep your hands here? That's not, that's not okay for me. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say things now and see how that goes. And with that guy, the man handled me like he was hitting my leg before that. I should have shut that down from the second it happened. Now I just know like you have to shut things down before it elevates. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I, I'm completely imagining what you're, what you went through. I'm so sorry that happened because that no. would freak me out as well. Yeah. And I, and I can only imagine how, you know, sort of the flip side, the positive flip side of what we were just talking about is the moment where you're up there and you're just like, you know, when you're really in your element and you're kind of like, you know, that must give you so much energy and so much adrenaline and so much like, yeah awesome just awesome power yeah it just feels good to um actually mostly just um be with people that i enjoy and do what i love i it definitely is uh, one of the happiest places for me michael disney luke says i hope cobra page continues to visit ut on her tours so utah probably I've seen her band twice and met her once. Truly kind and personal with her fans. Gorgeous rocker I wish I could hang with sometime. Oh, wow. Then, ha then hashtag celebrity crush. <laughs> and oh. now comes the question. <laughs> Cobra, what caused you to decide you wanted to be a singer? Let's hear the story. We've covered it a little bit, Michael. But, um, <laughs> you know, if you'd have to answer that question directly... To want to be a singer uh, what was that I just needed to sing since I was uh, able to remember what I was doing every day it's just a something that was in me and I think that singing is healthy even if you don't think you can hold a tune or not I think it's something people should try out you know doing the shower doing it in the car it's good for your soul and my family like we always had people around the piano doing Christmas carols like, at Christmas time it didn't matter how you could sing or not and we all did it and we all sang around that piano and uh, those made for special things I think it's just it's just fun it just feels good 